up to me, you know, and knew me, you know, black people, you know, mm -hmm. in the community, you know. But it wasn't for them, you know. It was for European people, white people that don't know me, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's a bad person. That way, when they railroad me, and all, they got what they deserved. Mm -hmm. It was a lot of blacks. But see, I'm going to take it even deeper from my Jamaican um, roots. You know, in Jamaica, you know, we have uh, area leaders. You know what I mean? Right. Those are the Dons. That's why right. I say Don Daga. You know what I mean? So we're talking about Dons. These are men that run the hood. If the people in that area have financial issues, family issues, you know what I mean? Violent. They go to the Don leader, uh, the area leader, and they tell them the problems, they work it out. Because like I said, you know, you know, so you can understand. That's why I like interviewing, you know, my ex-kingpins that I can really talk to. But uh, you know how it is, every time you went in your pocket, you did something, did something for them. Now, I created a phrase that I already trademarked called the boogeyman. You know what I mean? The boogeyman was the dudes that would come through, rob the dope dealers, you know what I mean? Um, uh, extort the local store, you know, little petty shit. So then people go out and they hire somebody and say, a store owner say, man, such and such keep coming over here robbing me, man. How much you charge to kill me? But say, go to the extreme. You understand what I'm saying? Or get them to stop, whatever. We and they, for all the time. Yeah, and they, and, they, and they do whatever they need to do. You know what I mean? So now you got those people that do that. And you got access to the boogeyman living in the community. You know what I mean? But the police is supposed to do that. You're supposed to be able to go to the police because you're paying your taxes and say, yo, somebody keep coming in here, taking my money, you know what I mean? Not paying, doing whatever. They called the police on George Floyd because he came in with a hundred dollar bill or right. twenty that they questioned if it was real. Right. And they called the police. You understand? Right. But now, um, with no police coming in the store and somebody going with twenty dollar bill, say, Man, it's real, they argue with you or whatever, they take the food and walk out, leave the bill and take the bill and walk out, take whatever and walk out. You can't do nothing. Cause the police yeah. not there to help you. By the time the police come, they gone because you're not gonna jump on and hold them. You understand what I'm saying? Right. But now you go get the local boogeyman. You understand what I'm saying? And right. say, man, Johnny and his crew, you know what I mean? Keep coming in here taking my stuff. I'm just gonna charge you to tell him to stop. Or I need you to tell him to stop. And once he tell him to stop, they go tell him to stop. Now when he come back, he tell him, oh, yeah, I'm gonna need $500 a week and I'll make sure everything is good. You know what I mean? But that's the same way they pay in taxes. Right. That's the same way they pay taxes for the police to protect you. Right. But it's a process to get them to protect you. Well, they don't particularly protect us. You know? no, no, so no, that's no. why we got these leaders no, but that's yeah. the point that I'm getting. Right, right. That they're not there. They're not protecting us. So that's how we created our own, you know what I mean? Fishbowl or cesspool. Yeah, we you have to meet our own needs and all that. Yeah, because know. they're cesspool too, don't they? Yeah. I'm not saying no different now. Because they take taxes from every single person and cannot protect every single person. You understand what I'm saying? And that's why people get robbed, raped, killed, and so on and so on. Right. But they still tell everybody got to pay. And, right. that's, and we ain't gonna get into that. I don't wanna get into that. Okay, uh, uh, okay, we got that. Okay, you got a sentence of 130 years without parole for federal convictions on conspiracy and seven related charges, right? True. Okay, what was those charges? Just say the names. The biggest one was the 848 King Super King. King Fan. Mm -hmm. Next was the regular King Fan. Mm -hmm. The 846, 841, handgun. Money laundering. Mm -hmm. I think I had like three or four of them. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, and the gun charge, mm -hmm. which I didn't get caught with on me or anything. Mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. You already know you got to get caught with. Yeah, you know. You know, that's the way they do it. They got a thing they that's. Say you, had, you, had, you know. It's called two point enough. enhancement. Exactly. Yeah, that's enough for it. All you need is somebody say, man, every time I used to see Unique, he had a gun. I ain't charged with a gun, nothing with a gun, but then now they give me an extra 10 years for a gun. Yeah. Just because he said I had a gun. You know what I mean? Uh, um, okay, so um, we got the seven charges. Uh, so you got life without parole because your prosecutor stated there was no hope that you can be rehabilitated. Your, sent um, your defense attorney asked that you only be sentenced for the offense in which you was convicted. But the judge said that um, he's bound by federal sentencing guidelines to consider your extensive criminal history and then sentence you as a career criminal. Right? One thing, it was actually the judge who said that. Well, there you the go. Prosecutors. But he correct me, tell him I was no, It was no hope for me, you know, if he ever seen one person. 
mm -hmm. that the, my search was made for me, it was me. You know? mm -hmm. And he said that because I didn't take the ass whip and lay it down, you mm -hmm. know, and just let him run over me and do his thing, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. When you fight back, you know, and I fought back in a legal sense, you know, mm -hmm. not not physically and all that, but when you, you resist them and all that, you know, mm -hmm. it, it actually uh, frightens them, you know. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, so yeah. they want to make example and put fear in other people and still. They don't want nobody to stand up to him. So he stood up to us, maybe somebody else would. So let's let's make a zap out of him, you know, and put the fear in the rest of them, you know. Because mm -hmm. you got a good thing going on there and there because nobody go to trial. Everybody cop out. Mm -hmm. I got a three month trial and fight for my life. And the only thing the judge was concerned about was his vacation in, in uh, May, you know. Mm -hmm. He kept threatening the lawyers, look, keep it short, you know. I got a vacation going and I'm going on vacation. In other words, don't piss me off, you know, because you'll be in trouble. He was concerned about the vacation like it was hiding in human life. You know? mm -hmm. Human life. Yeah. You know? And it was obvious, you know? And that's what kind of like, no, this is my life, you know? Mm -hmm. And I'm fighting for it, you know? I ain't let nobody just take my life. Nobody, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which is freedom. Not necessarily my life, but my mm -hmm. freedom. Your freedom, you know? Yeah. You know? So you will be here for a long time, you know, because mm -hmm. I'm fighting everything. Mm -hmm. So that vacation, call the people and, re and rearrange that, you know. Uh, let me say this now. So now after all that life plus all those 20 years running consecutive and all of that crap, and then they turned around and they said, and if you ever get lucky and get out, you got five years supervised release. How do you feel about that? Well, let me tell you about the word release. You know, everybody think get happy, you know, release and all that. It's a good thing, you know, and all. And it did, they programmed it. But it was really not a good thing, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna take you back to where the word comes from. After they uh uh emancipation, proclamation, and so-called freedoms and all that, mm -hmm. they passed a, a law which was the 13th Amendment. Mm -hmm which said that you can be held in involuntary servitude, which is slavery, mm -hmm. for the commission of a crime, you know? Mm -hmm. So what they did with that, they accused us of all kinds of crimes that are slavery. You stole an apple out of my backyard. Mm -hmm. No, I did. Yes, you did. I see you. Get, bring them into court. Mm -hmm. So they put us on the chain gang. They released us to the same people, the plantation and all that. Mm -hmm. They released us. At least we what? Constriction, meaning a contract, right? When they release, release you, they doing the contract over again. Mm -hmm. So in other words, we had a contract that bind us to society, right? Mm -hmm. We didn't know it. And they not gonna tell you until you get in trouble. And they still not gonna tell you. Mm -hmm. So release means to be released all over again like they did to the slaves back in the day. Mm -hmm. But we so happy to get out there and all that, we don't know that. Mm -hmm. We've been released. The truth is in the words, if you really break it down and think about it, start, and people just start talking and, you know, and slow down and say, what is I'm saying? You know, the truth is in the word. Release me, a new lease to you. It's like you uh, mm -hmm. lease an apartment, you know? Mm -hmm. And you, they want security deposit, they want this, and they want that schedule. If you don't mm -hmm. do it, they mess up your present or they take you to court. You know? mm -hmm. It's the same thing. We got a contract with society and don't know it. That's mm -hmm. why they bust your head when you when you play with their money, you don't pay the taxes and all that. Mm -hmm. And it's all voluntary, but they tricked us into signing it. Mm -hmm. the, the lawyers, they mm -hmm. set this up, you know. And they talk about the, what Cody Fennick got on the stand. He's a rat, he's a rat, you know. Not a rat, he's a mouse. The lawyer manipulated to get on there. He didn't mm -hmm. want to do that. He grew up with you. He cried on the stand. I don't want to do this. Mm -hmm. I grew up with him. I know his old family and all. He didn't want to do that, but the lawyer. That everybody think that was good, that don't never talk about. Mm -hmm. Nobody talk about the lawyers, what they doing. They mad at they call it for them. the wrong person all the time. We always mad at the wrong people, our women. They didn't make it on the visit and all that. You know, she messing with so and so now. You know, and all that. Mm -hmm. But it's hard, you know. We had to put out there. But the lawyers and all, that's what the word release means. Mm -hmm. It means they got new lease on here. They did it over. We mean to do over. Mm -hmm. So we, they still got the lease on us. Five years, ten years probation. Huh? 
But that's the point that I'm making yeah. is that they gave you another five years. If you beat the life sentence, yeah. you know what I mean? We're going to release you and, you and give you a supervised release for five years. So we're going to redo the contract of that life sentence and turn it into five years. And you now you're reporting out there, so you're still locked up out there. If you ever get lucky and beat this life sentence, we're going to give you this new job. Yeah, they keep us on some type of probation, you understand what I'm saying? parole, or something, man. They telling you they, that you're getting a sentence to die in prison, but then they want to add, like if you ever get released, we're going to release you with supervised release. With a contract of lifetime, you, you know? know? Same yeah. way when you do, like with the rats, you know? Mm -hmm. They own them. Once they tell them all that, they have to sign a... Uh, Cheers, 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 c